Hmm. You know, I was just thinking to myself the other day that I haven't featured enough movies on this show that feature a character routinely giving his victims enemas. I mean, Chatterbox had a talking vagina, of course, but just imagine that movie if we didn't have to deal with the stink of its upstairs neighbor. Water Power is a 1977 pornographic film that really spoke well to the audience that felt that Debbie Does Dallas did not have enough kidnapping or cleanly assholes in them. If only Travis Bickle had taken his date to this movie, I mean, she still would have been offended, sure, but she would have left that theater knowing that there is a much more thorough alternative to toilet paper. Ooh, and it's uncut, too. To present the fully uncut version, we have used a version which contains foreign subtitles. I'm not sure the subtitles are necessary. I'm pretty sure that every country speaks dirty anus. Oh, we got here. The film which you are about to see is based on... Hey, I wasn't done reading that! Okay, I guess I'll just assume it's all gonna end with Dwayne Johnson grilling fingerprints off of severed hands. The film stars Jamie Gillis, who would make a fantastic Patton. And not every movie starts out with a freeze frame less dignified than a dragnet mugshot. Sometimes I can't tell if it's the movie freeze framing or if my VCR has finally suffered a stroke. And what is it with 70s porn always confusing what to shoot in a woman's face? The film mistakenly credits Deep Throat's Gerard Damiano as director, when in reality the film is written and directed by Sean Costello. Excellent. That means it'll be as sexy as Dominatrix Without Mercy, Sexual Freedom in the Ozarks, and Forced Entry, the Harry Reams rape film. And as far as Damiano goes, I don't know what that says about a director when they're accidentally credited as making an enema porn and no one questions it. I do believe this is a true story. Back then, it was impossible to walk through these streets without someone trying to sell you shit. The 70s were fucked up. This was not the most convenient way to get to the top floor. I'm gonna guess Jamie is reading Highlights Magazine here. Hidden in this picture is a box, a rooster, a carpet, and two balloons. Jamie spends a lot of his time looking to see if someone's filming a ripoff of Rear Window. Oh, yes. Taking a bra off excites me, too. <laughs> what? Those things are tricky! That's why I always carry around a pair of scissors with me. Jamie Gillis is the porn legend who you might remember from Midnight Heat. Apparently, she's got a mouth like a hurricane and a twat like an earthquake. No, not that Midnight Heat. The Roger Watkins Midnight Heat, about the world's horniest hitman. Jamie was often regarded in the industry as being one of the better actors in pornographic films. Then he spent his later career playing with feces. I'm not fucking joking! Ah, uh, 42nd Street, where every midnight screening ended with a reach-around. Hmm, three X's? That's what my grandpa had on his booze jugs. Ooh, this must be where they sell liquor! Oh, sorry, where are my manners? There, I accidentally miss those sometimes. What's with the chick dressed in foil? Is she made of potato skins, bacon, and sour cream? Have you been to the Garden of Eden before? No, but I was once banned from a county market for stealing an apple and then blaming it on a rubber snake. Does that count? Luckily, this whorehouse happens to have a nurse standing by. You'll be a better girl for this, Pamela. You'll find it a most rewarding and pleasurable experience. Oh, I don't know, nurse. I don't really think I need one. This lady is a professional. Not everyone knows that a strap-on is the correct way to cure a fractured vagina. Well, Doctor, the patient has displayed an unwillingness to work happily among her peer group. Mm -hmm. She has kept secrets, refused to share her toys. So, brain surgery? This nurse intrigues Jamie, so he decides to ask about the house specials. There's B&D, S&M, fantasy fetishes, whip bitch or across the knee like Mama used to do, emasculation, infantilism, showers both golden and brown, Obedience training, cross-dressing, high colonics. And the worst, having someone speak to you in poor grammar when you have tape over your mouth and can't correct them. So Jamie has taken on a tour. Doctor, we have a uh, visiting medical student from Geneva who would like to observe your procedure. Oh, splendid, splendid. I, I enjoy having an audience for this type of procedure. His breast implant patients have only leaked cottage cheese twice. He really knows his stuff. 
Actually, he's about to give his client an enema. Enemas. Yes, yes, enemas are as old as mankind. Yeah, that's right. I forgot that God gave Adam one rib to create Eve and another to stick up her ass. Pamela is an uncommon girl. Therefore, I think she needs an uncommon enema. That's why I choose inflatable nozzle. Yes, you definitely want the inflatable nozzle. It squeezes out the most appropriate amount of chocolate pudding. I will remove the nozzle, and you will expel the solution into the bedpan. Now, I'm releasing the pressure. Do I really want to hear this? Very good, Pamela. Doctor is so hilarious that her ass just did a spit take. The procedure has excited Jamie so much that clearly there is now only one logical conclusion. This town needs an enema. God, if only he could figure out a way to stick this telescope up someone's ass, he could see the back of their teeth. He starts getting a little jealous when his crush gets a visit from Freddie Prinz here. Good, let me go stick his cock in here. How could you do that? Says the man whose new idea for a water fountain is the anus. I know what to do. I know what you need. Yeah, he's gonna stick her head on backwards. She could have good thoughts. Now she's dirty. And has shit thoughts, puke thoughts. But I can fix that. I'll give her an enema. She has vile humors. That's why she's acting like this. I'll clean, her, I'll clean out her vile humors. And thus, Scientology was born! He breaks into her house by spreading raspberry jam on her lock. This movie is so dirty that the actors smoke before the sex scene. And at this point, if you were in the theater saying, My god, this is about to get hot, the fuck is wrong with you? You're really a bad girl and I'm really upset. Weird. Why does it look like he's just reading the subtitles? This is where it gets a little tasteless. He makes her watch Porno Holocaust because it's about the same sensation as shooting cold fluids up your ass. This is such a questionable topic for a pornographic movie that even the camera is shutting itself off. Fucking pig. Clean her out. Well, again, Jamie Gillis is a decent actor and very skilled at giving people enemas. The cops are hot on this case, and their first order of business is to send the rape squad after him to dye his balls blue. I must say, it was nice of the filmmakers to get this location on loan from Sardu from Bloodsucking Freaks. Someone at the door freaks him out and even confuses him a little. He tries flushing the enema and sticking shit up his ass. At least in this scene, we find out his character's name is Bert. 45 minutes into the fucking movie, or if you look at the IMDb page, he's Bert the Enema Bandit. Quite an odd place for a Smokey and the Bandit reference. And who the hell is she? I'm your girlfriend, remember? No, I don't remember because your character was never established. Hmm, convenient place for a police station. I think the snuff film racket is right next door. That commissioner's on my ass. He says in the paper 48 hours. I'm giving it 24 hours to come up with something. Quick! And soon, or you know what? You're gonna have a lady partner. What? No, not a lady partner? Oh, anything but that. I don't want to work with Tyne Daly. Good thing this movie has narration, or I wouldn't even know that this character is fucked up. I can't just stick tubes up their asses and hope for the best. Yeah, I know, right? People will think you're weird. But giving an enema is an important responsibility. After all, it's my job. It's your job? What kind of pay does that job get? Do they at least replace your shoes after someone shits on them? Oh, look, he got assigned his lady partner after all. Okay, I might have pretty your leg. So do you want to step up at my place and have a drink? Great. First I got a lady partner, now I got a fucker. It's okay, because not only is she a cop, but she's also a part-time hamburglar. Do you, uh, sleep with your gun on? Why, yes. I do sleep with my penis on. <laughs> Why do you ask? This is going to be really awkward when Jamie finds out that both he and David Dukes are trying to sneak into Archie Bunker's house. What the hell is going on here? This enema rape film has broken into this porno film. <laughs> Why, we can't have that. You know the actress is totally into it when she has no idea what to do with her hands or her tongue. I suppose you want to know what happens next. What do you think happens next? Shit everywhere! Ah, shit everywhere! Ah, 
It's okay if you don't feel like jerking off watching Jamie Gillis give double the enema. Don't worry, it cuts to the cop fucking his partner. Mmm, this hot dog's really good there, Tom. You know what'll make it even better? Ass water. The police decide to set up a sting operation to catch the enema bandit. Hey, man, what is this? Uh, there's nothing getting personal there with her, are you? Well, I've sort of fallen for the girl, Captain. I mean, it's... She's a good person. Understandable. You have known her for eight whole hours. Has Jamie met his match? I don't care how many cops come after me. I don't care. They're not gonna stop me. Oh, but they will stop you, Enema Bandit. That's why the mayor has made it mandatory for everyone in the city to wear a butt plug. Luckily, she just so happens to be standing on the right street corner because Jamie instantly sees her and goes home with her. Don't you think it's kind of trampy, you know, picking up guys on the street? Oh yeah? Well, what does that make you? You're the one who complains that Niagara Falls doesn't smell enough like shit. When she goes off to the bathroom, he figures out right away that she's a police officer, and I guess taking her hostage is easier than just leaving and not giving her an enema. I bet you thought about me giving you an enema, didn't you? You probably like enemas. See, that's where you're wrong. It isn't that she likes enemas, it's that she doesn't like rapists. And after the cop takes his sweet-ass time to get there, he does come to his partner's rescue, but after the enema bandit has gotten away scot-free. Which, by the way, is how the movie ends. <laughs> what? We can't show him getting arrested. <laughs> Where's the sexy in that? The film is loosely based on a guy named Michael H. Kenyon, who was also known as the Champagne Enema Bandit. Not because he used champagne, but because the attack started in Champaign, Illinois. Perfect. So if we decide to make a movie out of this, we can use the same sets as Ninja the Mission Force, also shot in Champaign. But with... Far less enemas, I'm afraid. Kenyon was caught and paroled in 1981 and became the source for the Frank Zappa song, The Illinois Enema Bandit. Say what you will about the decision to turn his exploits into a hardcore pornographic film, but you gotta give him credit for this. This porno did have the cleanest set of assholes of any adult film in the 1970s. Now that's a good boy. You better not wet your pants this time. <laughs>